Today we're conquering the scrap box and making eight handmade cards using only leftovers from previous projects. Hey everyone, it's Ali. Thanks so much for joining me for this creative session. I recently reorganized all my card making scraps and I posted a video here on YouTube to share my tips and tricks for making your project leftovers more accessible and easy to use. A whole bunch of you who watched that video challenged me to test run the new organization system by making some cards using only my scraps. And you know what? Challenge accepted. <laughs> Today I'm sharing the full process of making eight handmade cards, but with one important rule. All the pieces have to come from my scrap box. I've never done this on YouTube before, but when I'm feeling uninspired and want to create, I quite often dig into my scrap box first. As well as lots of spare pieces of patterned and solid cardstock, as you would expect, it's full of leftover die cuts, stamped images, sentiments, backgrounds, and much more. I usually make extra when I'm working on a project, and sometimes I love to just stamp and color with no particular project in mind. Or if I'm in a messy mood, I make a bunch of mixed media backgrounds at once using my gel plate or stencils. That way I only have to clean up once, but I have a whole load of backgrounds to use at a later date. I save all of these pieces for future projects and my newly organized categories in my scrap box with everything stored in labeled pouches make it super easy to mix and match all these leftovers, meaning nothing really goes to waste. And us crafters don't like wasting things, do we? <laughs> my process for creating with scraps isn't rocket science. I love to choose a pouch, pour it out all over my desk and pick out some pieces that just appeal to me in that moment. It always depends on the mood I'm in and what's speaking to me on that particular day. This time around, I started off with a bunch of die cut banners, most of which are made from gel plate backgrounds or the scrap paper I use to wipe excess paint off my brayer during the process. Again, waste not want not. <laughs> There's also a die cut circle of pattern paper and this iridescent rainbow strip because I just couldn't resist it to be honest. It was there looking at me saying use me I'm so pretty I'm so rainbow and sparkly. How, how could I resist? <laughs> After I've picked my starting points it's just all about finding other pieces that match or contrast with the pieces I've chosen. I rarely have a finished layout in mind at this early stage, it's just about seeing what could go together and laying them all out on my desk helps me chop and change when I get new ideas. I always start with the focal points of the card and then move on to sentiments, finally onto backgrounds, mats and layering pieces. Creating this way often means I combine different techniques, materials, stamp sets and dies in a way that I never would have done having just gone into my stash and picked out products to use. It's a really fun way to mix it up if you kind of feel a bit bored with what you've got. Maybe you're stuck in a rut and you want to break out of your own style. Forcing yourself to use things together that you wouldn't normally use is a great way to think of new ideas and be more creative. And I'm also a bit less precious with my scraps. These are just all leftover pieces that might have gone in the bin otherwise. And even though I'm less precious, sometimes my scrap cards end up being the ones I love the most. So if you've never done this before, I definitely recommend that you give it a go. It's super rewarding creatively. Any larger scrap piece of coloured cardstock or pattern paper, as long as it isn't too heavily themed, like if it's Christmas, it will be in the Christmas section, is all organised by colour in my scrap bin. So once I've got the overall feel of the tones in a card design, it's super easy for me to dig through each category and find a selection of layering pieces to add a finishing touch. Sometimes they'll go with the colours and sometimes they'll contrast. With such a variety of scraps within these pouches, I kind of have a full overview of my full collection, so I often rediscover things that I forgot I had. All the cards in this video are fairly simple, but it's the extra little details like the layering that really make them feel finished. I hope you'll agree. <laughs> I've kept my editing pretty minimal in this video, so you can see the full process start to finish. I have allowed myself to pull a few other techniques and embellishment from my stash just to keep it interesting so I don't get bored. A wax seal, glitter brush pen or simple stamping for the background, some stick on gems. But these are pretty minimal and the focus of the cards is always on the scraps. You could be super strict about the rule and only use things from your scrap bin, but I decided only using cardstock from my scrap bin was enough of a strict rule for me. <laughs> I hope you love watching my process for these eight cards and it gives you some inspiration for your own projects. Now, I'm going to stick on some music, so sit back and enjoy the rest of the process. If you do have any questions about particular techniques or things I'm doing, then please leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to elaborate on anything that I'm doing. 
I'll check in with you again at the end of the video.
That's the last card of this video and while it hasn't made much of a dent in my scrap box, I'm really pleased with the eight new cards we created together today, all from my scraps. I'd love to know which one was your favourite in the comments. I'm pretty torn between the purple and yellow moth card and the one with the red poppies and iridescent hello sentiment myself. If you're feeling inspired to organise your scraps, I'll link to my video explaining my system here on the screen as well as down in the description box. So you can go and watch that next. If you enjoyed watching, please let me know either by giving this video a big thumbs up or leaving me a comment down below. Let me know if you'd like me to make more episodes of this series as well. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today and I hope to see you back here on my channel very soon. Happy creating. Bye!